I know it was written on your paper, but I forgot yeah. to bring up my copy. Well, paper copies of all that yeah, stuff, too. Uh, May 4th, May 4th, and I got oh, sweet. Off, uh, That's beautiful. Uh, yeah. No, there's, we'll talk about it, but there's really... <laughs> it's a little faster than normal. There's really no point. I mean, anytime you guys need anything, just tell stop or ask a question. It doesn't matter. You got me, Josh and John. John's a pro. <laughs> he knows everything pretty much, so... But yeah, uh, we're at the workshop. <laughs> we are. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> um, we can go through all this. We'll go through the toolkits because that's pretty much the most important part. You got toolkit. Yeah. You'll be able to do almost everything. There's very few tools that are expensive. Like the mo a soldering station is probably the most expensive. If you even try to start replacing ICs. Um, I mean, everyone pretty much knows the players. Probably won't have to go through that unless you have a specific question or what one's a clone of the other. Not much. We'll go through that real quick. I mean, that's something you pretty much have to have yourself to deal with the service data. It's not, I mean, I can help you. Everyone can help you with it, but it's just, you gotta have it for all like the voltage and stuff like that on ICs to be able to test stuff and know where the test points are. That's where you'll get all that info. Uh, the block diagram. Uh, we'll probably go through that. That's John will know that for sure better than any of us will. So if he wants to do that, or if you guys even want to see it, we'll put it up and you can see what it is. <clears throat> go through disassembly, inspection, and maintenance. That's pretty fast. And then we can just get right into like fixing players or whatever. If anyone has any damaged players, we can mess with right away. We'll go through that too. That that's real easy. It's, you can see so many times, it, it, it really happens to almost all the players. It's just some problems, like belts, cleaning, maintenance, and they almost always work with a fresh stylus or a rebuilt one. But it's really, honestly, just very few things. And then, yeah, the Q&A, and uh, we'll get into the players. Toolkit. This is where, if you have every little piece, it works great. These screwdrivers. Phillips one too, you can get them. Home Depot, Lowe's, doesn't matter. But you want something like set with the sturdy tip because you can, they just go bad. <laughs> Cheap screwdrivers. What else do we got? Quarter head heads. Yeah, somewhere. There you go. Yep. Yeah, I've got I got both standard and metric Allen's. Yep, that's for like the SFT and SGT players for going straight down the turntable to adjust the height. A lot of people don't even know that's there because you have to take the, the spring and the top part off. Um, it's not very good at that. That's the driver. Is that one more? That's for the bottom to take off the, uh, what do you even call that? It's got the set screw on the J and K players. It's just a bolt. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. There you go. Uh, electric screwdriver. Uh, you can usually get the small ones, but I'll use this because you can just adjust it. So you can't really like, hurt anything except that level. So you can hear it. it. Sounds like red. Just so you can't damage anything. You set it to like two or three, and it just it'll only go that far. Mr. Clutch. It's a wonderful time saver. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man, just torquing it all. You just you right. get tired of it real fast, especially if you try to fix more one player. You you will be happy you have a powered screw. Um, the Allen XD. Yep. That's for the, the again. Actually, that was for the high adjustment and that the SFTs. The eighth inch or the sixteenth is for uh, the um, J and K players underneath. 
John has a. Uh, it's up in a little hole. Yeah, exactly. John has like a. He sets it on a wood block. It's not a wood block. It's like a jig you basically made to set it above, so you can get your hand under there and adjust it while it's playing. I just I never I had that. I have a set of encyclopedias that I use because they're all the exactly. same. Exactly. I had a bunch of my mom's like weird romance novels that would just stack up, <laughs> and set it on those on each corner. You know what I mean? And just make sure because you can hear the rubbing. You just adjust it a little bit at a time. You on those pliers will save your life. That's for sure. For the screwdriver, I just got one of these that actually has. This is the Craftsman from Sears, but this comes out and you've got a large and a small, or a Phillips and a flathead, large and small, and then you got a slide and small on that side. And you get a quarter inch driver too to take all the screws out of the bases of the models and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. This for JK players, basically a slide rule. You can get them at Home Depot. It's it's just at every time for, yep, for the turntables to set the correct height on the platter. It's, it says in the manual, it says 30, 30 seconds. It's just 15, 16, you know, <laughs> it, says it says 30, 30, 30 seconds. I always laugh at that one for I was just like, all right, I guess that's where we're gonna set it, whatever. But this is definitely key to all J and K players. It's two bucks at like Home Depot. I need one of those pliers. This is pretty handy too. For the F and G players or anything that's like that, it's really all this is is a uh, thing to refuel RC motors. That's all it is. But you, it gets you into like where you can right into the uh, spot that will take the sewing machine oil, which is like the bearings for uh, the turntable motor right there um, in the F and G players. This you really want this. It's just so much easier. You just whoop, right into it. And it doesn't take much. Others, oh, um, you, are you still selling the Omni oil? Yes. Okay. Yeah. This is key for all the turntables. Like metal to metal, you pretty much want to use this. This this will save you a lot of frustration because yeah. <laughs> nothing works like this, and it, it's it's perfect. It's the Omni Omni Lube 350. John's got it. it. You can't. You just gotta have two bottles of it, basically, if you're gonna really repair players. Do you have some with you today, John? No. No. Okay. Oh, no. yeah. They actually don't make this anymore. Yeah, yeah. You might be able to, you know, find something on eBay. It was a certain type too. It's that. It's 10 1223, but it's for anything that's like metal to plastic. It's just one of those ones. It works better than the rest, but it's discontinued. You get lucky and find them online, but I think they were like six bucks or so last time I found one. What was the number for those? 10-1223. It's Phonolube. Is there any suitable replacement that's like kind of, sort of? I really haven't even looked okay. because I have these. I know. Yeah. <laughs> and I've it doesn't take much. Like the automotive section at uh, like Fleet Farm or someplace, and they usually have a huge selection of different lubricants and stuff. I haven't really tried anything else yet. But I imagine that's probably where you'd find something. Yep, it's just got to be something that will like not hurt metal or plastic because you're. Radio Shack down. used to sell one called the VCR lube. Okay. It cost it and closed <laughs> the store, so. Yep. Yep. You might be able to find it on their website though, which is Radio Shack has reopened their website and they have a lot of their stuff. <laughs> it's nothing really to worry about. As long as yeah, it, yeah. I mean, it, unless you want to wait another 40 years and then move the yeah. machine, I think even one of the guys have got the last the long, long time. Yeah, yeah, I thought, I saw it, but it's not on there, see? Oh, wow. You're like, cut it off. Huh. Either way. I think it changed the formatting when you use the different program. Ah, uh, probably. Yeah. It's open office, not fast. But there's the rest of it. Yeah, anyways. cool. Brush, because you want to clean everything. You want to brush everything out before you start doing any type of maintenance. Brushes first. And I know you've said before, don't use compressed air or anything like that, because you can damage stuff. Just get it out with this. I don't even know. Maybe if you had a tiny handheld vacuum, something that you know won't damage electronics, you might be able to use. Get it into a corner and vacuum it out. I, just one of those things, the brush. It gets dirty too, so you want a couple. It'll get that black. Melted belt all over it, phono lube on it. You'll get it. They're dirty. <laughs> and I got a couple of fine ones too, smaller ones. Key, very key. 
he gets into those places where he can't. Yeah, the belt remover, I mean, you, isopropyl alcohol, that works, but the ammonia, like Windex with ammonia, works way better. It really does. Not Windex, sorry. Yeah, well, yeah, Windex, but you can just go get ammonia too, it doesn't matter. That one, it works way better. It cleans it so much easier. Yeah, I just buy the big bottle and then I just put it in a little small jar. So that's 91%. Yeah. You'll be fighting the belt cleaning. That's just every time. They just deteriorate. You're going to get that stuff everywhere. There's nothing you can do about it now. Gloves, I have. I never really use gloves. I will. I started to, but because it gets annoying having to clean your hands from the black goo all the time. But I use these now because they're the tougher ones. You can get them at Home Depot. Just the nitrile gloves. They're a lot better. <laughs> Flashlight, you definitely want a flashlight. If you want to go all out, get a headlamp. It'll make, it'll make your life easier. But I mean, just seriously, a flashlight that big. Doesn't matter. You're gonna drop stuff, you're gonna lose stuff. Getting one of those uh, screw pickup, like not magnetic one, but they, the little claws come out, grab it. That'll save you some trouble too. That one right here. Comes in handy a lot. I got one of these flashlights, and then my drill uses the same battery, so I can interchange them. Um, yeah, uh, the all-purpose machine oil, it's just sewing, mach sewing machine oil. It's all a singer. Cheap, easy. You only use it for like two things, too, so it's, you'll never run out of one bottle. I use this for screws. You can, you want something good. You'll end up losing them. A whole little store <laughs> back. I found pill bottles work really good. I found these nice little. I think they're in the kitchen section, but they're like little serving cups. Those work really good. Oh yeah, nice. And then these are, these are actually the uh, frosting container off of the cinnamon rolls. Uh, that's perfect. And then the top of the Pepco Pep, Pepto bottle. <laughs> I do have to admit, Josh, I did see how you store, store stylus in the pill bottles. The pill bottles. I, I copied that. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. It, it works, works really just good, yeah. slick. I never saw that. It's a pretty, pretty good idea. Um, this this will save you a lot of trouble, too. Contact cleaner. Because there's a few problems that they seem like it's, you'll never fix it. And, it's just cleaning the switch in the back or cleaning the plugs with contact cleaning. Yeah. Super easy. Yeah, I know they sell that in the automotive section. Yep. Again, this is something I got at Radio Shack. <laughs> it's gone now, but... There's a lot of tools. I mean, it's not a lot of tools, but you'll find something you're like, oh, I'm going to get something else. Like, uh, if you really start messing with the inner electronics, Nice heat puller, so you can grip it, pull that out, not have to deal with it because it can be a pain in the butt, that's for sure. Another cheap part, I think like a dollar or two. Are most of those chips socketed? No, but we put standoffs in there so that it is after. Yeah. So yeah. And it makes it way easier too because if it's not the problem, you can put the old IC back yeah. in. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it saves you some time just to put that, that standoff in. And those are super cheap too, so it's not, you know. And I think you actually sell the stand up with an IC if you ever sell that, right? Yeah, I, I highly recommend it. It's so easy to break the brace around the IC. So do it carefully, put a mm -hmm. socket in, you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Multimeter? I did not. I have one. Yeah, show yeah. them now. Yeah, it tells you that you have a multimeter in the circuits. I know the uh, service manuals, they'll tell you what each circuit is supposed to read. Yep. You even, just go down the list and even if you even if you never get this get an ohm meter at the very least because arm stretcher coils go bad and it makes a wobble on the screen mm -hmm. and you it will annoy you forever once you notice it you, just you like, need oh. dramamine if you're going to watch yeah, for movies. real it just wobbles so much but at least you can test the ohms on that coil when it's off don't ever do it while it's on yeah. but when it's off you can test it i think 90 to 120 is good yeah yeah 90 to 120 ohms 
is fine on that, and you know it's not. That's not your problem. Is that out of circuit? What's that? Out of circuit. Ninety. No, you can measure in or out. Okay. As long as the play is turned off. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I also found this um, stuff like this. Uh, find the random ones because there's screws in there that you'll want. Like there's um, a screw that's the um, turntable screws on the F and G players. They have the, they strip out so easy, and it's just a pain. Like honestly, to find that screw like screwdriver that will actually fit it. John knows he's has a. I think do you still sell those or? You just tell people where to get them. Yeah. Yeah, it was a Japanese screwdriver. Yeah, I actually got one. <laughs> yeah. You sign it off right. It has to be a nice new shop. Yep, exactly. And you get one chance of doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But like, uh, like I found like these ones, somehow there is a bit in there that actually fits it, but you got to kind of be aggressive just because I always do, but like I kind of hit the screwdriver down to set it because they're just soft screws. I mean, you can strip them, but if you set down hard, not, you know, hit it but don't remember it's a player <laughs> but it helps to do that and then push down and turn it and you'll hear them they like crack out it was just they pop but if you don't you're going to be grinding it or drilling it out or having to make a flat head out of it you know and he has the replacement screws that are better yeah they're stainless steel yeah those don't strip out is there, a, is there a thread locking compound on those threads of those screws no was there, i don't no. think there was originally yeah okay but yeah, you'll find there's a, uh, tons of little tools that you end up like super glue. You'll need that for the turntable on the F and G or the J and Ks because once you get that height set, you want it to stay because then everything else goes around that, like adjusting it once you have the proper height. I usually buy a little replacement rubber feet because half the time the feet are always gone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're always gone. <laughs> uh, I think that's it for just random little tools. Other than that, it's just finding stuff like tweezers or others. <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah. I uh, yeah, for sure. You want to add an Allen key size to there to adjust the cams on the F and G models. You need a. You're right. That is a different one. A point fifty half a millimeter. Yep. That was usually a hard one to find, actually. Yeah. I mean, you can go to Harbor Freight and buy the whole metric Allen wrench set, and it goes all the way down to less than half a millimeter. So, like, I have three. Allen wrench sets with a half millimeter one. I lost the Allen wrench every time I use it, but you, it's totally gettable. Yeah. I don't know what the fractional equivalent of that is, but yeah, it, sure. it says in the manual half a millimeter, 0.50. Cool, .050. yeah. Zero fifty. It's definitely something you want because those will get messed up yeah. and slide around, and you'll have to reset it on the switch. I have a hard time definitely with a few tips too. <laughs> I, I found these ones that says precision tip. They seem to work really good. The point for, uh, ones. Getting the goo off from the stuff from the um, the belts that have melted when uh well, like I said, after a while you'll start to find things like half inch nine sixteen, so always in there, toothbrush, stuff like that. It just comes in handy. You'll always want it. Extra belts are always good. <laughs> Lots of extra belts. I think that's pretty much it for just simple tools. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, I think that's, that's a basic kit. You know, you can get more, but there's really no need. All those tools right there, you pretty much be able to service any player, at least mechanically. You covered all the uh, uh, RCA or main players, but are there any special tools needed for the Hitachi main? You know, I think everything in this toolkit has worked for me. I, I don't think, think so I've ever too, had to yeah. buy anything extra. No, I can't think of it. Maybe, uh, yeah, no. I was maybe a different screwdriver, but as long as you got the one with multiple bits, you should be okay. Because mm. a lot of that, that's what's terrible about Hitachi's too. It's just a lot of messing around with it. <laughs> like there's manuals but like it's just it's not like the F like any of the RCA players or anything like that. They're just way more complicated and there's no, no I wouldn't say more complicated but like to fix it's more complicated and there's not parts for it. They you have to use a spare player. You'll you if you find spare parts for it somehow you you've won. Cuz they just don't. I've looked for effort like just trying to find 
a part that like John John has tons of gears and stuff for that you know you got a huge supply of it no one has that for any of the Hitachi style players so you have to find one that's a clone of a clone of that or the exact same player and hope that you have a part in there that'll work Hitachi's have early model and late models so yes. like the early model weighs like five pounds more, more <laughs> than the they're density. tanks Yep, and the later models are just so light, and like they're they're way more simple too. You can see mm -hmm. everything. Like you can, the board just moves up. It's even tying your board. Like just everything's lighter. The tray, what they the mechanism they use to lift it, it's lighter. Everything's just better. Brian, I got one general question. Um, has anybody ever got three belts from CED Magic? Uh, if you go to their site. Uh, they will lose the belts and you can yeah. send something in, but I've tried recently and didn't get belts. Really? Yeah. Is he still doing it? Um, I thought, but I, it's been so probably last year years since I've been. He was all out of turntable belts. Yes. And all that. Yeah. But I'm not sure about any other ones. I tried to get them a touchy one, but got lost in the mail. <laughs> you didn't hear back from him? No. I just talked to him probably last week. Um, on Facebook, so you might be able to get in contact with him. He's probably, right. I know he goes on a lot of trips. So. I could go through my emails because at one point he gave me a link to every belt that he was at one point selling. Once he started to give them away for free, I was like, I need to find, I, I can't do. And the way I was servicing players, the two belts at a time wasn't going to work. <laughs> I was like, I, I'll have to, I had, where, where do you get these? And he sent me the links to all of them. I can give them to people later, but it would just be weird, hard to dig up right now. But it's in an email somewhere. So those, I mean, I, that's I I like his uh, the JK belts. They've always worked well for me. Yeah. yeah. And that's I. He's, he's he has a lot of belts, but <laughs> those ones have always been really good for me. But yeah, you can even use like an O-ring for those too. I don't know how long they'll last. I don't know if they'll damage it by you know putting tension on it. But they work. You find the right one, they totally work. It's a quick fix. And this full list is on the PowerPoint. It's just it got reformatted with this program that he's using. So if you print off this PowerPoint, it'll have everything on there. I think too. Let <coughs> like you scroll down. I was saying if I do this, it might do it. Yeah. Oh yeah. See, it just kind of made everything a bigger font. <laughs> but yeah, there are those. Anyone have any questions about players? I mean, I can uh, go through here. Oops. Got it. Yeah, what kind of player did RCA use to test their PAL discs in house? Did our, yeah. RCA did not make a PAL player, correct? They modified one of their own uh, NTSC players to do that. I always wondered about that. Yeah, I've never even questioned it. That's crazy. That's, that's a good question, though. Because all the all the PAL players are Hitachi yeah. phones, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The electronics, but I always wonder, like, just what it looked like or how they even did that. I can't answer what it looked like, but yes, they <laughs> made several based upon the uh, um, J two hundred player. Oh, I see. They just yes. made some moderate changes it's to make it easy to change the uh, micro, to change the uh, that makes sense. rotation okay. speed. I assume they were pretty relatively yeah, resourceful and stuff like that. <laughs> They have all the stuff in house. Uh, there's a few PAL players. Uh, that, there's a 5001, actually, too, that I've seen. I, I think I might even had it. I can't remember. One of the PALs I was missing, but there is another McMichael that's not pictured. And again, there's the Zenith VP4000 that's not pictured, but we know they exist. We've seen them. We've held them. Um, I mean, these Sears, almost all the Sears except that one, that's an SFT SG clone. These ones are all clones off of basically the PAL players, but you know, it's the Hitachi style. But these ones are tanks, the early ones are just tanks. <laughs> None of them are fun to work on, they're really not. No. <laughs> Sanyo is probably one of the most unique in just the way it loads and plays, and the, just the way it looks inside, totally different from the rest. It's pretty cool. Um, I've never seen that one. Obviously, Tom has. <laughs> uh, yeah, J's and K's are pretty much all like just very few differences. There's a little bit, but not not like not really cosmetically. Functions. Yep. 
JC Penny one's pretty hard to find, but that's just an SKT 200 clone. Or K. I'm not sure. Do you remember what one it is actually? Or is it just, uh, just it's gotta be a 300. Kind of, it's a stereo. It's gotta be a 300 because it's got a remote. You're right. Okay. So it is, it's off a of 300. Good luck finding that remote though. Right? I've tried. <laughs> It's impossible. Okay, yeah. For real, I've got every other remote, like well, Sanyo do, remotes, I, yeah. tons of stuff. I, I, I cannot find that one. I, you have a lot of the ported remotes and stuff, but yep. Good luck finding one. Is yep. Oh yeah. The Dude, I've never RC seen one. It's the same stick. Yeah, it just, just has JC Penny on it. Yeah. Yep, that's all. It's you, but you can you can use an RC on it, or you can do the TV one, mod it, and use it on that too. Elmo is just it's the Toshiba. That's really all it is, the Toshiba VP100. These, actually that too, those, the, v, the and the wards. These two and that up top, the Elmo, they're pretty easy to fix, but you're not really gonna find many belts. And you have definitely gonna find the turntable belt for them. It was like a flat, but like it had kind of a lip on it so that it could ride on the wheel, the pulley, and not fall off the pulley when the turntable will go up and down. Um, can't do that anymore. They don't make that belt. <laughs> the belt that Tom has is f completely flat, and it will eventually slide off. But Charlie Bertram on CD Magic forums found out that like you can get the belt, the round belt that Tom has for the metal pulley, and you groove that plastic pulley, which is actually right here, right in the center. There's a groove right there, and that belt will stick in it, and it makes it so much easier to repair the Toshiba, the Wards, or that, the Elmo. But you definitely need these for that. And you need a groove. But anyway, do it, you just put it on a lathe, get that like quarter inch belt groove for it. It's real easy. I had uh, emailed him one time and he said the white ones are for the mono players and the black ones are for the stereo players. Because there's a difference. There in is the a little height, difference. Just a little bit. I've used both, I it have works too. okay. Um, but for the VP500 and the 550, these don't work. No. You gotta use you gotta use that metal pulley uh, kit that yeah. Tom sells. You can't use it for the Zenith 4000 either. I tried. Exactly. Yep. It's, it's, <laughs> oh yeah. It's physically smaller. Yep. You can't put a sleeve in there or anything. Exactly. Yep. I've tried. It just doesn't yeah. work. I just moved the pulley that came with it. It's easier. <laughs> yep. <laughs> for sure. I mean, anyone else have any different questions? Like the realistic is another. Just a different top, but it's a Hitachi, you know. It's the Sears. It's all those terrible ones to work on. Those are cool though, because they have RCA outputs, even though it's mono. They're realistic. Yeah. Yep. So I mean, that's kind of like user friendly. Most people today have televisions, but RC you can't find a television without RCA inputs on it these days. So yeah, the component plugs are great. Outs. That's the other thing too. With any of these non-stereo players, like the 90, uh, the 101, the 100 that 100, that 75. There's an audio video mod. It won't make it stereo, but it puts the, R the RCA component plugs out. And it's just one one video and one audio, well, obviously one video, but one audio. You just use a Y adapter if you want it to go to both speakers. It's super easy, but it costs roughly like 30, 40 dollars, I can't really remember, but. That's correct. Yeah. They're, they're worth it's it if you want it. Yeah. If it. If you have TVs that it won't connect to, and you can only use it, it's way, it's worth it. And I think, John installs it, I can install them, you can install them, it's not hard, they come in a kit that John sells too. Yeah. But that's the easiest way to get that out, you know, to get, so you can plug it into a TV that doesn't have coaxial. Or a lot of TVs now, they don't even care about the signal from these and they just flash blue, oh, here's a picture, flash back to blue, flash back to the picture, and it just cuts in and out, it's terrible. This is the only, uh, PAL player with a wireless remote too, which that one's real hard to find too. I've seen a few of them, but it's not, they're few and far between. But that's the only one I know. This one has a wired remote. I think, I think both those do too. The 202, I don't know if that one has a remote, but I have seen it, but I don't actually, I think that's one I didn't have was the 202. Anything 101 is a demo player. Most people, you know, they use it in stores. So they're usually, sometimes they're beat up. 
as you can tell, definitely people didn't have a clue. Just jamming on them, some someone worker just cramming the candy back in, breaking spines. I've heard they let you if you go to if you went to an RCA store, they would let you rent a one on one and some discs to see if that if you really liked it. I think that's why they had them in the stores. They had the one, the display model, because I because. I got, when I bought my first player, it was a Sears player, but it came in a one-on-one box. And I think if you wanted to rent the player, they'd give you the player in the box. You could take it home for like a, a couple Ooh. days and then come back with it. I, I don't remember where I heard that from, but I think that was a so cool, man. I believe it, though. Yeah. They wanted to sell them, you know? Every rented. one-on-one I've seen is always is beat up. <laughs> some some way, some column. Yep. They took some abuse, that's for sure. Right. Or they sold them cheaply after they after the announcement was made they weren't making them. They're like, buy a 101 for 35.99 and get a disc free. And people <laughs> yeah. were just scoffing them up. Yeah, yeah. Went through those players. Went through these players. Yeah, these are pretty much all rare ones. <laughs> They're not easy to find. That's probably the hardest one to find ever. It's a VP 4000, and it is basically just the Toshiba 550. Don't you have one of those? Yeah. Oh yeah, okay, so I, I still got it in the box, for sure, with the remote. Because of this guy. That it wouldn't make the trip, so I didn't bring it. But <laughs> yeah, I found two of them from a guy in Nebraska. Ryan got one. Tony mm -hmm. got one. No, that it's one of my favorite players, honestly, just because of how it looks and how rare it really is. There's, we've seen three basically out of all the years. I've, I don't know how many you've seen. I've heard of two others, <laughs> one but not that's it. We've seen them. The Tom's, yours, yep. mine, and then somebody fessed up to having one on Facebook, but I don't think it went any further than that. There's like one other person on the TV Magic forum, but again, I don't even remember. It was so long ago. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> maybe five exist, but there's got to be more out there. I would assume, but I it's like finding the Zenith service the disc. Service They're out yeah, there, I've but. I've been looking for that forever, and I just. Yeah, service manuals, you'll want them if you're going to do anything besides mechanical repairs. And even these will help you a little bit with that, but this is basically all for electronics, servicing it like that. You'll definitely need the multimeter. You're, if you're gonna get really crazy with it, you'll want an oscilloscope, but I mean, you you'll have to have John or someone teach you how to you, use it for that. You can find them cheap. Yeah, oh yeah. You, can, you go oh. to a hand fest, you get them for 20 bucks, you know? Yeah, all the manuals I can get my hands on, I make PDFs of, so yep. if I have it, I can email it to you. Yep. And there's, uh, who's the company that, Make, it has some of these for sale. Um, I'm not sure. Sam's. 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 Yeah. Sam's. If you if you feel Sam's like having a physical back. copy or buying one or whatever, you can go there. They're a bit pricey. Though. Yes, they are. They're like forty dollars. <laughs> RCA. Yeah. Yeah. Is it okay? Well, then yeah. yeah RCA and Sam's do all their manuals, not just for CED. No, all of their manuals. Get values. Yes. I know they have a lot of the same. Yeah, I've seen a few. I've bought 150 DPI. It looks like crap. I think it was this. I think I got Sandy from or something. Or no, I think that was just from some other guy who had. It's literally just a website of manuals. And I got lucky. And I've gotten, I actually had the Sears, I still have it, but the Sears manual for the, uh, their SFT clone, the, the one, like the 100. I have the manual for that. It's like that thick. And it was all like three ring binder, but there was no binder. It was just wrapped in some weird like plastic wrap. But they got them. But yeah, if you need them, Josh is the guy. He's got all, you know, the PDFs of whatever he had. I have some. <laughs> the Zenith manual tells you more about the principle of operation than the RCA manuals yeah, do. It does. They just <laughs> spell it out for you. They give you like a whole two-page spiel right in the beginning of the, the literature about yep. there's how three it works. Yeah, there's the... Yeah, there's the... It's like theory of operation. The service, actual manual. Service data and then some other one. Did you bring them? Yes. Cool. Theory of operation. Sanyo was the same way too. Their manuals, had, there was like three that came with it. Yeah, the VDR 3000 manuals. Yep. Here, if anybody wants to look at them. But they're, yeah, service manual, servicing guidelines, and theory of operation. Yeah. They're all good to have. John, would you like to talk about this? Because this is more your area than mine. 
covered this last year, but yeah, I mean, if no yeah. one wants, if everyone's good with this, we can skip over it. But if yeah, this you is are. the block diagram. Which one do you have here? Um, uh, this overview for the G line. This is G line. Yeah. Uh, any questions about the block diagram in the in the owner's manual? Yep, I'm good. Yeah, we, we can cover it in the technical session when we look at play. Okay. And we can reference this cool. at that time. Yes, that'll work. Yeah. Thank you. So, yeah, we'll, we'll go over that. It hasn't changed since last, last year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and there's really not too many new people, so we'll go through it when we start messing with players. Yeah. Player assembly? We'll just go through that. When we're going through players, it's easier to see it than talk about it, honestly. I could sit here and describe it all day, and you'll be like, what is what? Exactly. What? Exactly. But when you see it it's finally coming apart, it's just a step, you know, few simple steps, and you have the player disassembled. It's real easy. So Almost all of them. Some are easier than others. This is true. Take the Toshibas are terrible, but they're fun. It's awful. It took me forever to figure out how to get the turntable actually out without breaking anything. <laughs> But that's how it goes though, like a lot of times you just need to take a parts player and just destroy it almost. Take it all apart, see how it works, see what does what and why. It'll help. <laughs> it definitely helps you learn on what to do, at least, again, mechanically. You'll see this does that, or this needs to be set here, you know. It's a lot easier. Inspection, we'll just go through all that when we're doing it. It's that easy. Maintenance, yeah, these. This is something we'll talk about, like simple problems. It's just one of those things, you, 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 you'll you know this after messing with two players. Before that, you really won't know. But, you know, simple stuff like that, that right there. Clean, you know, put a new function belt, uh, motor belt on, clean everything, half the time, it fixes everything. It's kind of insane sometimes. I don't know how many players, $10 players, $30 shipped to me, but like it's just yeah. a stylus and a belt and cleaning. They work brand new. You're like, oh, wow, this is great. Yep. Well, you know, there's, it's literally these. You'll you'll go through these and you'll know everything once you see it. It's super easy. The rainbow effect. That's on like the S to SFT and G's. All models. You'll see it. Improper turn table speed. Lube stuff. Grease stuff. Maybe a new belt. All that stuff will go away. You actually with those too. You have to adjust the the poles underneath the player. You don't, yeah. You don't need really this tool because you you have to do it with your fingers anyways. So just this will help you from having to take the turntable on and off eight times. You can do it with the bottom. If you take the bottom shell of the player off, you can. There's space to get through the chassis with uh, the with the metal ruler you have, the depth gauge. You can you can get it from the bottom. You just like take two chairs, just put the player on the two chairs so you can access it, and then you can reach up in there and, and measure it. You can so you have to take the bottom board out and like serve. No, take take the bottom of the shell, the bottom shell half. Yeah. Just take take the player out of it, and the chassis will allow you to access up, and you can put the feeler gauge in there too. Cool, there's, cool. There's Even with the board on the sill. Yeah. Cool. I found that. Yeah, out. I got lucky and have had this, so I've never really had to. Yeah, yeah. That. that's the actual tool. Yeah, it's yeah. RCA's. And it's this side is for like the the 100 and that and it tells you you'll see the oh, cool. you can pull the turntable out and you'll see like this side's for G players or not sorry like the 200 250 this one's for the 100 101 75. You can make one out of a regular turntable. Yeah. Oh yeah. Bad magnet or something in it. You could sacrifice it for that. Yeah, you would just say you would probably want to do like here's your like 200 and 250 one. Here's your 100 one just because. I don't know how you would do that part. Yeah. You'd have to get a different size I mean, magnet or something. Yeah, a lot of this stuff you could play by ear. I mean, it, it, the turntable, as far as adjusting the um, the sink plates, I mean, you can just spin the turntable up and then as soon, you can adjust it just to make the scraping noise go away. And then to, usually that's all right. I mean, exactly. It's really yeah, good. they're really close. Like, I mean, the feeler gauge is almost paper thin. Yeah, it's, it's really just thin. metal. I, I, I actually I, have that too. I intended to bring mine, but I. Yeah, that's it. I mean, that side is paper thin. Yeah. This side is not. I think it's fifteen thousandths, something like that. One is thirty thousandths, one is fifteen. I'm pretty I sure I have the. When you get the tool kit, it usually came with that yellow sheet that yeah, showed. It, tell, it says even in the service literature what it tells cool. you three different things: the the gap in between the two plates, 
the gap between the plate and the, the, the magnetic plane, strip, and then one other with like one other ball. Yep. But, so those things, you, without these tools, you'll just have to do yeah, like he says, or just don't need guess. Tool, it you know, makes it easier. Yep. It'll save you so much time you can if you can find them. But like he said too, you can just take a crap player that you know doesn't work. You're gonna turn into a parts player. Take the turntable out, cut it like this. You know, this allows you to get in there better mm -hmm. without having to yank everything. Yeah, because you can you set it in, you can just oh, out of the way, oh, back yeah. to where I need, oh, out of the way. It's just it saves you so much time. And that's putting these in is a pain in the ass, anyways, because there's a, a bearing at the bottom, a bearing at the top. That bottom bearing never, never is where you left that. it. I use grease. <laughs> What now? I used thick grease to hold it in, axle grease, because the, the little, uh, I guess, bearing will fall out. Cause it's got a spring behind it, I think. You're talking about in here? Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. the that's the height adjustment right there. Right. When you go down, this moves up and down to adjust height. Yeah, that little ball can fall out. Yep. And I use like axle grease to keep it in. Yeah. It. yeah. I usually just tip the player up on its side and slide it in. That's a decent idea, because it's not going to fall out once it's in there. Yeah. You gotta like shimmy it down in there because there's two bearings, so like. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. That bearing, the bottom there, one so never yeah, stays yeah, where yeah, you yeah. have it. You can be so careful and take it straight out. Yeah. You go to put it back in, it's not where it was. You gotta have your tongue out. That bottom bearing's right right like angle. this, and you're trying yeah. to go into it, it just doesn't do it. It's, it, it. You gotta not want it, and then yep. it'll go. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, that this is where. Um, the contact clear comes in huge. I don't know how many players I've had that are, you've done everything right, you fixed everything you could, it's still got like a staticky image. You just make sure the player's unplugged and off. <laughs> but you just, the three, four switch in the back, spray the contact clear in there, hammer it back and forth a few times and then put it back to what you had it in. And all of a sudden you have a clear picture with no static or fuzz. You're like, this is amazing. It was a, not even a 10 cent fix. The arm stretcher coil, it's really not fun to replace. It's almost, <laughs> if you know how to take the player apart without destroying it, it's almost easier to just find a whole new, better stylus arm that has a good st arm stretcher coil on it. Because if you solder, if you go too high, on like high heat on trying to desolder that coil, the posts inside the plastic just melt right out. And you just ruin that st arm stretch coil. It's fine to get out, but that's not what you want to do putting them in. How often do those arm stretcher coils fail? How frequently? Um, I've replaced several out of probably hundreds of players. It's not, I mean, I wouldn't call it common, but I wouldn't call it uncommon. It's just, Is it it's something that, that simple. Is it that eventually happen with all players, or does Do you know if it will happen to all players? It, it's, a, it's rare, it's fairly rare, and I don't know why this happens. It like usually player. happens when a player's been in storage for a long time, and then it's been woken up. Okay. Yeah. You can see that there is the tiniest copper thread right there on this post that you can damage that disconnect it and this will just it melts right out it's a pain in the butt but that's why you can see this one's kind of got cut so you can solder it or connect it however you want a little farther down and not have to solder this in because it's the only thing that holds it is like a little washer like that pinches onto it so but this is definitely this will happen but it's not so far for me it's been rare well, I have three SGT250s, and all of them seem to have that little bit of a wobble in them you described. Mm -hmm. It seems unlikely that all three would have a bad arm stretcher coil. Well, with the F and Gs, there could be, it could be as simple as like the stretcher coil back there because it's a different mechanism, but there's a magnet on oh. it, and that can fall off, and then it stops the dampening from happening correctly, so you'll see that wobble. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's one of those things, as simple as finding the magnet, putting it back, a little glue, or putting a whole new coil in, or putting a whole new style arm in. Honestly, if you have the parts, I love just, here you go, new part in, style arm. Make sure you had it set how it is, you know, because there's a gear on the side for the, the, you can mess up the timing, because it just moves it, and it knows that's how it kind of correlates the time that it's at. If you push it too far forward and then put it on, it like won't start right, and just, it's weird. But just, if it was functioning, just try and keep stuff how it was. You know what I mean? It's just one of those things. You see the gear where it was set, keep it there. If it was working, if it's not working, you're just gonna have some guesswork. But again, you can roll it forward, kind of back, set it and try it. A lot of this stuff is just messing with players. The more you mess with them, the more you learn, because there is knowledge, there is stuff to learn, you know, from people, but like, you just gotta do it.
Brian, I've got one thing to add. These coils can be repaired. And there's a tool I'm going to add to your list verbally. A temperature controlled soldering iron. You set it to 400 degrees, just melts the solder, but doesn't melt the plastic. If you can do that, you can do some of those repairs yep. around that. So yep. It's the same thing with the uh, front panel replacement. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, you got to be real careful. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and it's it, that's that'll be your most expensive part or uh, tool. Is that really? And that's only you know, hundred bucks, two hundred at most for like a really good one. And you definitely want something that has good yeah, temperature control. Around four hundred that you work with. Solid job. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It's just one of those ones. Like for real, out of all the tools, that I I spent like hundred and fifty, I think, on a good soldering state, and I've. Didn't regret it at all. Because like, any other one you're going to use, you're going to just burn it. You're going to break plastic. Everything will go wrong for you. You definitely need temperature control, like you said. It's it's one of those things. If you're going to do electronic repair. If you're not going to do that, you don't need it. It also helps you to make sure you don't lift traces off the boards. <laughs> <laughs> yep, if you do that, you're going to have to start jumping oh, stuff. and That's horrid. I think I had one of the craziest ones I've ever seen. I sent it to John because it was quarter of the board it looked like it was just jumpers going everywhere like they just fried something like all right we'll just go to there the traces were gone it was crazy i don't know if you remember it but it was it was a while ago it was probably three four years ago but one of the weirdest like just jerry rig jobs i've ever seen i was like holy crap they did this did it end up working <laughs> well, i had to give it to john <laughs> I was like, I kind of get this, but I don't really know, and he'll know it way better than I will. I think lightning or something in a case like that it would fry those traces. You know, I voltage don't know. surge. It or didn't something. look that bad. I mean, it didn't look that bad. It just looked like someone was really bad at soldering at first, oh. and then they just started destroying it. Well, someone kind of knew something started coming in. Like, well, we know this needs to go here. We can follow it on that. You know. Probably someone tried to use something like a soldering gun. Just <laughs> totally. <laughs> exactly, for real. With the trigger zip tied down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the well, we're 300 yeah, watt yeah. one, yeah. <laughs> Light bulb turned out, it still works. Sound problems. That's one of those things, too. When you get down to sound problems, like if it's really not working for any disc, it's probably an IC that's broke. Yep. You'll have to get out the multimeter and measure just to make sure, measure all the voltage. It's in the manual. You'll need the manual. It'll tell you what everyone is. Then, after you put that in, you need a frequency counter so that you can adjust it to their specs. And they give you a test point and everything where to put it. If but, you don't have one, you can usually do it manually. Yeah, because you'll, 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 you'll hear a sound works. coming in. Exactly. But this helps because it'll be like, go to 700. So you're like, 700. Works great. But this is one of the things where this and like the standoffs, they help so much because you're like well i guess that's not it i don't have to do all this crazy soldering just, just we'll pull it out but this is worth buying i think you can find it for like 50 bucks somewhere and if you get some some scopes a lot of scopes have frequency counters yes, built into this them. is true yeah. and if you learn how to read a scope well you can read frequency off yeah, the scope yeah. Re what you learn how to do it it's actually yeah. quite easy do you remember is it four digit it has to be yes four, yeah. Yeah, four, four digit counter yeah so you can, it's it's worth it though. If you start, again, you start repairing electronics, it's worth it. Uh, third reduction gear, that's a common problem. That's this, yep. That one. Tiny little splines that break all the time. It's a fail save. Yep, oh for sure. They did it to not break the player, you can replace this part instead but it's what moves the stylus arm on the J and K players back and forth. If you break this, you'll hear a lot of clicking or you won't really see anything move. It won't, definitely won't start the disc because you can't move it to home to start the disc from the, you know. Cam's misaligned. Like you said, you're gonna wanna find the Allen for that because it's a different size. And it's it's not, like I said, it's not the hardest to find, but. It, Harbor you're Freight. Buying a whole set of Al Al Allen wrenches for that one Allen mm -hmm. wrench. Yep. I it. Oh yeah. But you'll you'll be, that that will when a pot like on the SFT and G's and all that like when the power switch is in play, it's on in play and not playing. You know stuff like that. You can adjust those cams to get it back to where it needs to be. So off is off. Load is load. Play is play. You know what I mean? 
it's from people not knowing what they're doing. They shove a caddy in and try to yeah, yeah, it like on. put it in, keep caddy, and they just jam it up, and it makes that cam slide off or like just right on. It's in there, you know, it's just moving inside. Yeah, because the set screw wasn't past their strengths. It's worse. Uh, people put laser discs in. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's LP records. Yep. Oh, nice. uh, Common problems I've had. I don't know how many players I've gotten that have a laser disc or an actual record in it. Mm. Yes. That's and you're just like, well, that wow. stylus might be a little messed up too. You never know. If it tried to set it on it, it probably didn't, but it's one of those things. I've seen some bad stylus too. Just bent bars and everything. You're like, how did they, what did they do? If you're lucky, only the cams will, <clears throat> will misalign because the way the F and G models work, when you move the light switch to the load position, it moves a wedge underneath the turntable spindle and the wedge, it rides up on the wedge and pushes the table up. Yeah. And because the bottom part of the player is like a fiberglass kind of thing, the wedge has a little plastic U that it sits in and that yep. U can get broken off and yeah. then the wedge will just sit there and yep. when you move the white switch it won't do yeah. anything. We so. can show that part, it's underneath, it's yeah. like a straight piece of plastic, it's like a wedge, it's beveled at the end type deal, like 45, and, it and that's what lifts and drops the turntable on the F and G players. It's literally, man, you're manually doing it. All the other ones, like the Sanyo does it but, with a motor. Right, yeah, or something like yep. that. But this one, it, it just, it slot the, the wedge slides on a on a hanger, and the hanger is plastic, and it, I mean, it, it's so brittle that, I mean, just probably dropping the player with it in the load position, the spindle could yep. hard on it and break that piece. Because I, I went and I got a player that had the cams misaligned and I shook the player around and I heard that little piece of plastic floating around mm -hmm. and I was like, I wonder what that is. And I took it apart and I saw that it was broken. So if it happened to me, it could happen to anybody. Absolutely. And the cams going out is one thing, but if you go through all that trouble and put it back together and it's still not functioning properly, then you gotta go deeper into it and yep. repair that. Cause oh yeah. It's one of those things too, you'll see if it's broken out when you're doing the regular service because it's right where you have to grease two things. Right. So it's what you'll see it. But he's right, they break. I've seen them. They're just, just brittle. Mm -hmm. It's, just it's, it's old plastic. plastic. <laughs> yeah, it's like fibrous mm -hmm. something experiment. Yeah, the transfer rod coupling, that is for the J and K players. There's the, I forget what they call it. There's the, it stops the turntable from moving and raises and kind of lowers this. It's got the plastic piece on the end, but that is attached to the transfer rod coupling and that gear. And that breaks all the time because people will put it in the wrong way or like they'll be a certain way and they'll turn the player on and it just goes over and snaps it, keeps trying to go. Do you still have those parts? Or you? Uh, we have them specially made. Yeah, with the brass and, rod. And the pin is now brass. Yeah. It's not going to break on you. Yeah. They, they work well. We sold a lot of these and they work fine. Cool, cool. I, I've never had a problem with them. But. Right. It's a mechanical sure, fuse. <laughs> I have one in here. It's kind of funny to think that somebody at RCA actually thought it was a good idea to have a rod with a plastic cap push your disc up. Something is physically touching the disc inside of a JK player to put it into the load position. So if you have a player that that transfer rod cap is missing, it will yes. gouge the disc oh, and then it will break your yep. stylus. Even some of them, they're so hard. They're hard now. Yeah. They, they have no give. It's not supple. They'll totally it'll, damage it. It'll, it'll, Tom sells those. You can even go to a hardware store and find a little like rubber nipple you to put on top. Buy a disc, go, you, put, you have a perfectly good disc you put in a player and you watch it again another time and that one spot in that movie gets ruined is because mm -hmm. the transfer rod mm -hmm. pushes up against right. the disc and it burnishes it a little bit. Yep, absolutely. So that's why I like the FGs and the, uh, the Zenith 4000 and stuff. because The, the, the turntable whole, actually lifts it up. The whole so, ladder yep. moves up and down. The top keys are like that too. Yep. Good for thought. All right. Again, this is something, I mean, there's really no point to go through that. We'll go through all of it. <laughs> right, exactly. But we'll go through all this when we're taking the players apart. It's just easier. I can sit here and describe these to you, but I mean, it's no point really. And again, it cut it off, I think, yeah. <laughs> but it's super easy to, you know, 
they are one of the most common problems. Then Josh's question. <laughs> well, that was going to get filled in with other stuff later. It never really happened. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, I'm, we can pretty much start looking at players. It's the easiest way. We can take a break or whatever and then start messing with them. It doesn't matter. We'll just take apart everything we can. I'll show you how to disassemble the F and, the, you know, the F and the Gs, they're all the same. You know, not all the same, but the servicing is basically the same. Same thing with the J and Ks, but those are obviously completely different. <laughs> but yeah, it's pretty easy. Were there any questions? I guess we didn't stop to ask. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, any specific question, it doesn't really matter. If you think of it now or later, it's... Has anybody ever seen a service disk for a Hitachi-based machine? I would assume Sears have. Yeah, I would think. Thank you. I've it's never seen one, no. I can't say physical. I can't even say a picture online of it. I didn't even know the Zenith one existed until I saw the picture you posted. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I got it. I brought mine. And the Zenith is no different from the FG uh, service disk, right? That's it's just correct. a different it's the same. Okay. I don't even know it's what a description. description. That's the funny thing. <laughs> what, what was the question that you had this morning, John? I can't that was what does the Tatum mean in C E D Atom? Atom? Just a C Datum. Yep. Datum is one piece of information. Okay. <laughs> That's all okay. we give you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of been bugging me for years, you know, just oh, kind of actually in the back of my mind. <clears throat> what does that mean? I'm surprised I didn't get a copyright violation. Generally YouTube. communicating each other. Howard is one that somebody has done the books and he looks at the style. That's Brian. Brian does? Okay. I think he did a lot of research for the study. So I don't know if I follow Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. you did. Yeah, you've done so much work with these. It's crazy. Just yeah. the fact that you have all spare parts and you've made parts. We have to. <laughs> exactly. No. And like the style.